Good evening, Mr. Robinson. You were asked to make a question, is that correct? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Yes, if you'll please quickly come to the microphone. In nine seconds, eight, <laughs> seven, six. If you don't make it, you don't get the four. He's going to make it. Vernon Robinson, uh, tell everybody where you're from, please, and identify yourself. Please. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, in three parts. You know, I ran for state chairman in part because the current state chairman wouldn't say anything about amnesty against the Bush amnesty. And he once told me that the role of the chairman of the GOP is to be the RNC's representative to North Carolina. So the first part of the question is, what is the role of the NCGOP's officers vis-a-vis -vis us and the Republican National Committee? The second question was, the current chairman and several of the legislative leaders intervened in three primaries in the East. In Norm Nick Sanderson's race, everything was okay. He crushed the guy who should have been indicted. They had actually recruited a Republican to, uh, uh, a Republican who should have been indicted for the, the uh, travel gate deal. The second guy was a money guy who, uh, uh, Larry, uh, Bill, Bill Cook beat, but he only won by, by eight, 18 votes. Because okay, we need the question, Mr. Robinson, please. The question is? The question is, what is the role of the NCGOP in intervening in primaries? And finally, we have a senator who's gone off the, uh, the plantation on a whole slew of issues, including voting yesterday to expand taxes on the internet, voting to debate our natural rights, defend ourselves, et cetera. What is the appropriate role for the NCGOP officers when you have an elected official who's tossed the, the platform overboard and has gone broke? Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Uh, we'll begin with Mr. Bradley on this, and you have two minutes to tackle as best you can what you just heard. Thank you. Well, when it comes to the Republican Party, we represent a Republican form of government. So to start with, we're a bottom-up organization. There's no way that a uh, GOP chair should be representing the RNC to us. The GOP chair should be representing us to the RNC, and that's pretty much all intervention in Republican primaries is just wrong. It's against, I mean, the whole, when, when the party intervenes in Republican primaries, that's another thing that creates the angst and the division, and that division carries all the way to the general election, and then we lose. If we want to start winning elections, we have to stop doing the things that divide us against ourselves. And one of those things that divide us against ourselves is intervening into primaries. And as to our elected officials that walk away from the platform, uh, we're a party for a reason. We're a party because we hold common values and common issues on the platform. And if our elected officials are walking away from the platform, then we have a duty to go to them and say, hey, this is what the platform says. This is what we stand for. And you're walking away from it. So there is a measure of platform enforcement that we have to get involved in. And whether that's just one-on-one -on -one counseling until they start changing the way they do business, or it gets all the way up to the fact that uh, we deal with how much money they get. It, and, oh, thank you. Uh, and we can enforce the platform by uh, controlling the purse strings, by controlling the money, by talking to them face to face, or in extreme uh, courses, which doesn't count for Senator Burr, uh, censure. So these are all tools that we can use to enforce the platform, and it's something that we have to do. Mr. Kidley. Okay, it's time for Political Reality 101. Um, a statement made about the chairman. In years past, the Republican Party didn't raise enough money, didn't have enough money to have a statewide organization whatsoever. So they were on their knees to the RNC to give them any money, any help that they could to provide them people and pay for them to be working during the campaign. But now we've raised enough money in this past election, I think we raised around $18, that we don't have to have all of their money to come down here. I eat victory offices all over the all over the, uh, uh, the state in its last election. Most of those were provided by the RNC. But we don't need that as much anymore, and I agree with what uh, Glenn said. The thing about it is we're not here to take orders, or the chairman's not there to take orders from the RNC, he's there to tell them how the Republicans in North Carolina plan to run their state. 
Then the second one as far as interfering with primaries. Well, let me tell you something, folks. I voted against that in the state executive committee, and I was pillared for years for it. In fact, one time at the state convention, they passed the Marcus Amendment to keep me from trying to run for office because of that, because I voted against it. It happened in Moore County. It happened back in 2002 when we, when we didn't want to, when we had five Republicans go rogue and went with Jim Black, and they, they went after one of, the, one of those people. I voted against it because they wanted to interfere in the primary. I told them, if you let them do that and you're not specific to this one primary, you will let the chairman and the party interfere in any one they want. I was killed, pillared, people chastised me, ran me over, ran me down. In fact, so much my wife don't have anything to do with the Republican Party anymore because how hurt she was by how I was treated. So, folks, I was there. I stood against it, and everybody else let it pass. It's law now. Major D. I certainly agree with the premise that the state chair or the vice chair acting in his absence is the voice of the North Carolina GOP to the RNC, not the running boy for the RNC back here. They are our advocates. They are supposed to present to the RNC the position of the sovereign body of the Republican Party of North Carolina. That is their duty, not just their personal election choice. Now, as for the, the vote yesterday by Senator Burr, I just spent the afternoon getting torn up on Facebook over this very thing. Because, frankly, I can't find much in that vote to agree with. And I am not apologizing for Senator Burr by any means. I don't know why he voted the way he did. But folks, I have the bill right here. And I sat here and read it. And there are people says, this creates a new tax. No, it doesn't. Do we have any fans in here of the Tenth Amendment? We got any people in here that like the Tenth Amendment? That's exactly what this bill says. The Congress says that the state legislatures have the power on this issue. It doesn't mandate that they tax anything. It just says that they have that power and authority and put it right back in the states where that issue duly belongs. So it's up to our state legislature. It's an existing sales tax. Bear in mind they're getting ready to overhaul the tax structure in North Carolina. They want to reduce or eliminate our personal income tax. And frankly, if somebody in California or Minnesota has to pay a few extra pennies for buying a widget over the internet from a supplier in North Carolina so that we don't have to pay personal income tax, I'm all for it. I agree with these guys. Um, our chairman, our state chairman, is our advocate to the RNC on our behalf. It's not the other way the other way around. It's not top down. RNC should not be telling us what to do. We should be telling them what we're doing in North Carolina, showing them how well it works. I know that they offer us advice. Sometimes we may take it if we feel that it's good. But certainly, we are a sovereign body, our Republican Party, and we. This is what you guys elect our officers for. So that is definitely not the duty of the RNC to be dictating to our chairman what we should do here. Um, the other thing um, that I wanted to talk about, there are so many things that we need to do as a party, the chairman, the vice chairman. Marcus mentioned the things that he's done. The county parties, I don't agree with getting involved in the primaries either. We as individuals do, but the spokespeople for the party, for the state party, this last year, uh, it wasn't the state party that did some of the, I know a lot of, they got a lot of flack for it, but we had some really good conservative candidates that um, the state came in, I think it was more the caucuses in the state and the house, it was not the state party, but the state party took the rap for it, came in and promoted some other candidates. And it made a lot of us grassroots folks pretty angry. 
we, uh, we had already picked some really good, solid candidates. One case that I know of, a campaign that I worked on, um, after the, the, the uh, establishment, so to speak, as you guys wanted to call it, came in and, and had another candidate that they were giving money, he backed out and he still only lost by 120 votes. If he had stayed in the race, he would have won. Thank you, Ms. Crawford. Before we have our closing comments tonight, I would love you as an audience to uh, show your appreciation for this forum. Each of our candidates will have a three-minute time limit to do a closing comment. I ask your specific attention on that. Before we get to that, I do want to remind you of an important event, Dr. Claire Gray, Tuesday, May 14, at 7 p.m. at Salem College at the Elberson Fine Arts Center. Details on that on the Forsyth County GOP website. Also, uh, Thursday, May 9, Davidson County Tea Party meeting. Chris Jessup, 12th District GOP candidate, will be there. Uh, I do want to recognize the candidate for North Carolina uh, chair of the Republican Party, Jack Brosh, is with us today. Jack. <laughs> Mr. Brosh is planning to be with us this evening, so if you would like to, uh, after the program, meet with him and ask him questions directly, feel free to do that. He was not invited to be part of this panel because we're specifically about the vice chair this evening. Uh, I do also want to thank, and I it was remiss when I gave our thanks earlier, Celeste Stanley, thank you so much for the efforts that you uh, gave this evening. Too. Sergeant at Arms and 6th District Chairman A.J. Dowd has two other districts uh, to represent. I want to introduce my cohort and our newest president, Federation with your schedule to uh, be around for specific questions because I know that's what you'll want to do. 